Shalom, Shalom, and welcome to Blessed Handmaidens of Yah and Yahoshua, the Women's Ministry of Israelite Heritage. And right now we are in part six of our video lesson entitled An Israelite Test Legacy. And an Israelite test is a female Israelite. And uh, we've been looking at examples of how Yah opened up uh, a female's womb and it was such a blessing to her and how childbearing is a blessing and not a burden. Okay, so turn with me to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to take a look at Elizabeth. That's Luke chapter 1. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 7. And it says... There was, in the days of Herodes, the sovereign of Yehuda, a certain priest named Zechariah, of the division of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aharon, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before Yah, blamelessly walking in all the commands and righteousness of Yah. And they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Okay. Drop down to verse 11. We're going to read 11 to 13. He says, And a messenger of Yah appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fell, and fear fell upon him. But the messenger said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has is heard. And your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name uh, Yohanan, or John. Uh, Drop down to verse 24 and 25. And it says, And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Yah has done this for me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach among men. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that she's equating barrenness or not having her womb being opened with uh, reproach. She said, uh, to take away my reproach among men. And a reproach, that is an expression or of rebuke or of disapproval. And um, also another a definition of reproach, a cause or occasion of blame, discredit or disgrace. And so it was a disgrace for her not to have children. So all of these men, uh, these baby boys that we've seen, um, that their mothers were bearing, God bless them, they all grew to play an important role in in history. They were all um, men, again, that, that just played a very important role. So what we've seen is that motherhood is held in very high esteem. We must cherish the blessing from Yah. And bearing children is so important that it is listed as a criteria of a widow to be taken care of by the assembly. So let's take a look at that. That's 1 Timothy chapter 5, 9 uh, and 10. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. And it reads, Do not enroll a widow unless she is over 60 years of age, having been a wife of one man, well, well reported for good works, if she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the feet of the set-apart ones, if she has assisted the afflicted, if she has closely followed every good work. So we see there uh, in the begin beginning of verse 10, it says, if she has brought up children. Drop down to 16. It says, if any believing man or woman has widows, let such assist them, and do not let the assembly be burdened in order to assist those who are truly widows. So they're not even considered... Uh, truly widows um, to be taken care of taken care of by the assembly unless one they brought up children so that's a very honorable position all women that's what we're created to do I mean that's why we can reproduce and so don't let the adversary convince you um, that getting married having children and managing your home um, is a burden and because that's just simply not scriptural we've seen that so Yah told us to be fruitful and multiply, and that can be referenced in Genesis 1 and 28. So we must understand that our attitude towards 
homemaking and childbearing is leaving a legacy. Um, we want that legacy to build generations of righteousness. So not only do we have a great influence over our men, our husbands, but also on our children. Um, we just have to make sure that we are leaving no room for the adversary to come in and influence us um, so that the word of God is not evil spoken of. We don't want to let the adversary come in and have us, you know, being clamorous, bolsterous, and just causing havoc in our home. So what we see, um, what we have to realize is that we are our children's first teachers. Um, thus they are a reflection of us. And so how they are raised speaks volumes on whether or not we train them up properly. So turn with me to Proverbs chapter 10. Let's take a look at this. Proverbs 10. And look at verse 1 it says Proverbs of Solomon a wise son makes a father rejoice but a foolish son is his mother's sorrow okay so if you raise foolish children that's a mother's sorrow that's again that's a reflection of you if your son turns out to be foolish well then you know that leaves the question okay what did well how are you training up your child you know um, turn with me to Proverbs 29 And let's look at verse 15. And it says, A rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child unrestrained brings shame to his mother. Again, uh, as their first teachers, that does require discipline. We have to discipline them and train them in the way that they should go, according to Scripture. But here it says that, you know, if the child is unrestrained, just being rebellious, that brings shame to the mother. Why? Because we are very influential in their lives. We train them. We set the example for them to follow. Turn with me to Proverbs 22, 15. And it says, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline drives it far away from him. So again, we just see that we are to be disciplining our children according to Scripture because that trains them up um, in, in the way that they should go. So. Um, set, an excellent, set an excellent example and let's leave a legacy of righteousness. That's the whole point of this, legacy, uh, this lesson is leaving uh, a legacy of righteousness. As Israelite women, Israelite tests, we are to leave the highest standard of excellence for our family and for our children. So another word for legacy is inheritance. And turn with me to Proverbs uh, 13. Proverbs chapter 13. Now let's look at verse 22. And it says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Okay, so what we see is that a good man leaves an inheritance. Well, that inheritance is an inheritance of righteousness or a legacy of righteousness. That's what that verse is talking about there. So, for example, um, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're actually going to take a break here um, so that we don't have to be interrupted in the middle of a thought. And we're going to come back with part 7. So shalom and hallelujah. Torah.